And if you would, join with me in the seventh chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, the seventh chapter. And we're going to look at verse 14. And then we're going to turn in Isaiah to also chapter 9. But first, let's begin reading the seventh chapter and look at verse 14. And so everyone has their Bibles open. I'll read as plain as possible. And would you follow with me? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then if you'll turn to the ninth chapter and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And we're going to also look at the 11th chapter of the book of Isaiah, so if you'll keep your Bibles in hand, We'll be looking at that chapter here as we move through the sermon today, but we want to look at this scripture that's found in Isaiah that was written many, many years before Jesus was ever born. This is a prophecy that God had revealed to Isaiah to give to the people of Israel, and it's a prophecy, a word that has been given to us today, been given to you. The scripture says in chapter 7, verse 14, the Lord will give you a sign. And so today, the sign of Christmas. And so I'm going to ask in the next 15 minutes that you pay attention <coughs> and open up your heart to listen to God's word. Will you do that with me? Lord, I pray give this next few minutes. I pray the spirit of God will move in our hearts. And that Father, our minds and all that we're thinking about. Lord, you would just capture our hearts, our thoughts, all that's in us. Father, right now, that we would just spend time with you. And you bless this message that it would be. Not my words, my opinions, but dear God, it would come from your spirit, from your heart, Lord, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Here the scripture says that God was going to reveal a sign, and the sign would be the birth of a son, and they would call his name, this title, Emmanuel, which speaks that God is with us. But the birth of Jesus was to be a sign to the people and to you as an individual. It is a sign that God is with you. With you in all the difficulties and all the hardships and disappointments in life. God sent his son to be a reminder, a sign to you and to me that He cares for you, and that He has come to be in your life. To be the presence in your life for direction, for power, for strength. That you might put your confidence in Him every day of your life. To know and to have faith and trust 
that God has given us His Son. And His Son is a sign to you of His commitment. A sign of His everlasting faithfulness to your life. The scripture says in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, that his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. You'll notice in some of your Bible translations there's a comma between Wonderful Counselor. But actually that is to be one name. Wonderful Counselor, then Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the scripture goes on to say in verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The scripture tells us that God has a plan for the world. And here it is revealed that Jesus, the Son, he is going to establish the righteous government of God on earth. This is the kingdom of heaven. This is a promise that God has made to us that Jesus will come and as the Son, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Wonderful Counselor, the Prince of Peace, He will bring God's kingdom visibly to earth. This is what is often referred to as the Millennial Reign. Jesus will establish the kingdom of God, the righteousness, the justice, the mercy of God will be established upon the earth. And the knowledge of God will be made known to all people. There will be peace. The chaos that we see in the world today. Jesus will come. And he will bring order. To that which is broken. His government will never end. And Jesus will come and establish the kingdom of God visibly on earth. The authority of God will reign. The Bible tells us in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9, that the Lord Himself will be king over all the earth. The scripture describes that state in the 11th chapter of the book of Isaiah. If you look at verse 6, the Bible describes that day in which Jesus will reign as king over all the earth, over all the kingdoms of the earth. The Bible says in that day the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a child shall lead them. Verse 7, the cow and the bear shall graze, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Verse 8, the nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den, and they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The Bible says in verse 10 of Isaiah chapter 11, and in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, speaking of Jesus, for he is a descendant of Jesse. Physically, we know that Jesus came to be born of Joseph and Mary. And they were the, the descendants of King David, who was the son of Jesse. And so that is an explanation of what it means when it says the root of Jesse. Who shall stand as a banner to the people, for the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. This is the day in which Jesus will establish the kingdom of God visibly. It will be on earth. And for a thousand years, Jesus will reign as king over all. This is the promise that God gave to the people of Israel. A promise where there is confusion. The Son, Jesus, will come. And he will bring clarity to confusion. To that which is broken, he will fix the government. Today we live in a state of confusion, even in our own country. In politics. In the world in which we live. 
The world is filled with confusion, filled with complexity, filled with chaos. And it is only through Jesus that we have the promise of God that when He reigns as Lord in our lives, Jesus can bring to your life clarity, a direction. He can bring to your life light when there's darkness. When there is confusion, difficulties, it is Jesus, the promise of the Son, that God has given us that He will be your wonderful counselor. You see, the kingdom of God today is in our hearts. When a person submits themselves to the Lordship of Jesus, there is the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us in Luke, if you'll turn to the New Testament with me, in Luke chapter 17 and verse 21, Jesus said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. That is, it's in your midst. And those who believe in the Lord Jesus like a child, this kingdom of God, though it may be invisible to the world today, but in your life, Jesus establishes the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is established in the hearts of those who are obedient and trust in the Lord like a child. Look at chapter 18 of Luke. Verse 16, Jesus said, Let the children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. So the kingdom of God is on earth today, but you would say it's invisible. That is, we know that Jesus is not reigning as Lord and King physically on earth. But when we receive Jesus as a child into our hearts, we receive the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is where the Lord reigns, where He is Lord. And so we are part of the kingdom of God today, those who have believed in Jesus. And He is your wonderful counselor. He is your mighty God. He is your everlasting Father. He is your Prince of Peace today. Jesus was a sign. God said, I'm going to give you a sign. A virgin shall have a child that is married. And that child will be called Emmanuel, God with us. The Christmas sign to you and me, is that Jesus came to be born so that God would be with you. In all the problems of life, in all the grief, in all the sorrows, He is the one who has come to be with you. Jesus is a sign that God loves you. Jesus is a sign that God cares for you. Jesus is a sign that God has a purpose, a meaning for your life. He gives my life definition. Many make the mistake of looking in the world, going off to school, finding a job, and they're always seeking a purpose in life. But the greatest purpose that we can ever find is the purpose of following Jesus with your life of giving Him the proper place in your life as Lord. As Lord, He promises to be my wonderful counselor, which means only He can help me solve problems. We all have problems and difficulties, don't we? In our families, at work, in our own personal lives with finances or with health. We all have experiences where we need counsel, and Jesus promises us that He will be our wonderful counselor. He has not come into our life for a purpose other than helping us. That is why the scripture says, the Lord is our help. It's wonderful to have someone that you can count on. 
We've talked about today grief and sorrow in our lives when we have to say uh, farewell to someone, though it's temporary. But I miss people in my life. I miss my mom and dad. I miss them terribly sometimes. Mom was one who gave me good counsel because I knew that she sought to do good for me. There's many people who give counsel in politics. They're seeking other reasons. They're seeking fame. They're seeking power. And a lot of times people are misled into thinking politicians sometimes are doing things on their good behalf. And I'm not here to say all politicians are liars. That's not what I'm saying. But we sometimes we put our faith and confidence in people, and that's a mistake. Because we all fail, and politicians fail, and people in our churches fail. Put your confidence in Jesus. He came as a sign to you that He will be your wonderful counselor. He's not in it. For the money. Jesus isn't in it for the pain. Jesus came to be with us because he simply loves you and he wants to help you in life. That's great to know, isn't it? That I have confidence in someone who truly loves me and he is in my life for the one purpose of bringing me close to God and to give my life direction to give my life clarity, to help me through complex situations. When there's grief, He promises to comfort me. When there's death, He promises to hold my hand. He is a sign to you that God cares for your life. I remember this morning I was thinking about past Christmases, and I remember one particular uh, about six years ago, mom was so ill, and it was snowing outside, and she was bleeding internally, and I needed to get her immediately to the hospital, and she was so tired, and physically, her body was exhausted from the illness, her kidneys had shut down, and she was so very ill, close to death. And I remember I wrapped her up in a blanket and I put her in my arms and carried her down the front porch. And I remember the snow was blowing and she was just shivering. And she had placed her confidence in me that I was going to get her to the hospital. And I remember talking to her mom, just hold on, we're almost to the car. And I was scared and I myself was worn out. It had been months and months of illness. And I felt sorry for her. But I relied upon the Lord in my life. As we got in the car, and we drove to the hospital, Fort Hamilton Hughes Hospital. I remember how lonely I felt. I felt so powerless. That mom was there and she was so sick. And there was not anything I could do for her. But the sign of Jesus reminds me, He is the mighty God. Which is the name of God reminding us that all the armies of heaven belong to Him. All the power of God belongs to Jesus. And in times of those situations, when I feel powerless and hopeless, I have the confidence of knowing Jesus. He is a sign to me that He is the mighty God in my life. He's a fortress. He's my strength. We have sometimes problems when we lose confidence in ourselves. I often hear the mistake of coaches sometimes in sports. They try to drill into the kids their mind. You can do it. You just need to work harder. You can do it. And I understand you need to have confidence because if you don't have confidence, it's difficult to do any kind of task. But as a Christian, we go above saying to one another, you've worked hard. You can do it. We step up and say, God is with you. And because He's your mighty God, He's your fortress, He's your strength, you should have confidence, not in your abilities, which are limited, but put your confidence in God, because He's mighty to save, and He has come as a sign to you that He wants to give you the strength that only God can share. When Jesus came, He came as a sign to you and me 
that He's the mighty God of your life. Sometimes situations may seem hopeless at home. Situations may seem hopeless in your life. You seem powerless. You can't change. But know that Jesus came as a sign that with God all things are possible. Jesus said, with men this is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. And then we read, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. To say that I can do something is to deny that God is in my life. If God has called me to serve Him, He is the mighty God. And He alone promises me that I can, through Him, cross over the sea on dry land. I can, through Him, do all things because God is the Emmanuel of my life. He's a sign to me. So when we recognize Christmas, we ought to see Christmas as a sign from God that He is with us as our Counselor. He is with us as our mighty God. And He is with us as our everlasting Father. There's great assurance in knowing this. You know, this past week, or this past month, there's been a many sad report. One is a young boy who's come to this church. He lost his dad. Ryan Couch. I don't know all that Ryan has been through, and it's not for me right now, even if I did, to share that. But I can show this, that Ryan and his, and his siblings, they've been through many difficult days. And they've been disappointed. And many times we're all disappointed in life. People let us down. I wish... I was saying the other day, I wish I had been, and still, want to be a better dad to Landon, Allie, PJ, and our families. But we fail sometimes as people. We fail in our promises. We fail in our commitments as parents, as friends. But God is our everlasting Father, which means He never fails His commitments. He promised you and He's not going to fail you. He promised to be with you. And He promised that He's going to care for you. He's promised that He's preparing a place for you in heaven. And He is the everlasting Father who never abandons His children. You and I sometimes abandon one another. We fail in our promises. I have. And it saddens me, but it's true. People that know me, they know I have failed. But the truth is that with Jesus, He's assigned to me that God is my everlasting Father. He knows the end from the very beginning. He knows all that I'm going to face, all the different problems, all the diseases, all the letdowns, all my hardships, all the tragedies. God sees them because He knows the end from the beginning. But He's my everlasting Father. He will never abandon you. He will never turn His back on you. He promised to be with you in all things, no matter how ugly it may get, and others may leave, others may disappoint you, but God as your Father has promised, I will always be with you. My home is always open. Mom used to give me this great assurance. I remember, bless her heart, she would say to me, Paul, I always want you to remember this. You may fail, and you may disappoint me. You may even break my heart. But always know this, as long as I live in this house, when you knock on that door, I'll always make sure you have a place to come in, and I'll give you rest. That was a wonderful promise because I know that mom meant it. But more than my mom's promise, I have a promise from Jesus. He is a sign from God that He's your everlasting Father. And He's never going to abandon you. Even though sometimes you feel as though you're alone. Other people, they feel like they're alone in this world. But know that He's your everlasting Father. He has come to you. Jesus came and died for your sins. 
He put Himself on the cross. He was raised again. And He promised that He's coming again. And He said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. He is your everlasting Father. The promises that He's made to us as a sign God gave Jesus to us so that we might always remember and have confidence and have the peace of knowing that wonderful joy that Jesus is my everlasting Father. And then finally, as Emmanuel, the sign of Jesus is that He's your Prince of Peace. I have peace today. I have peace that passes all understanding, the Bible says. And everything that I face today, though sometimes we do despair, we become discouraged, but I have peace knowing that my life is in the hands of God. When He sent Jesus to come to earth, it was a sign to me that God knows what I need. He knows what I need. He knows what you need. When Jesus came, He came to bring you peace. And only can Jesus give peace to the world. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill to men. Is what the angel said when Jesus was announced at His birth. Jesus came to be the Prince of Peace in your life. In every situation, in all that you're going through, you can have peace in knowing that with God, your life is hidden in Christ and God. Sometimes situations, they seem big. Illnesses seem impossible. Positions at work, things that happen in your life, they seem too impossible to overcome. But there's great peace in knowing that Jesus came as a sign to us that He is our Prince of Peace. He is a sign to you and me in a world filled with darkness and troubles. I have peace in knowing that God is with me. God is in charge. I am hidden with Christ and God. The Bible says the angel of the Lord surrounds the righteous. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Which tells me that no matter how problems can be in my life, God is bigger than my problems. He's bigger than the world's problems. And that Jesus, He is my King. He is the Lord. And He has come into my life to bring me peace. And to bring me knowledge of God. I hope today there's knowledge and peace in your life. That comes by first confessing that I've sinned against God. And believing in the Lord Jesus. That He came and was born of a virgin. And He died on the cross for your sins and for mine. For the world. And that He was raised again on the third day. That same Jesus that was born of a virgin. He is the Savior of men. He's the Savior of the world. He wants to be the Savior of your life. The Savior of your family. Jesus came as a sign. That's what God said. I'll give you a sign. A sign that I love you. A sign that I care about you. A sign that I can be with you in all things. And I can change your life. I'm praying that God changes my life in 2021. And you know why I believe He can? Because He sent His Son as a sign to me. A sign to you. That God can do great things. Greater things than we've ever seen before. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the peace, for the power, for his faithfulness, that he is our wonderful counselor. His name is the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming for us. No greater Christmas gift do we have than Jesus. In Him we trust and pray. And we give you thanks. We love you, Lord, because you first loved us. Amen.